back. This is Boomer Life on Sea Isle 650. If I had a million dollars, if I had a million dollars, you know, you could actually be the millionaire next door. If you get some help from a financial consultant, advisor, planner, somebody with the credentials of, I don't know, say a Jim Doyle, senior financial consultant with Investors Group Financial Services, Inc., and the show has been a bit of an eye-opener, highlighting the value of working with an experienced financial planner. And how can we argue with life-enhancing benefits like comfort, peace of mind, and confidence? And if you hear any of these stories during the course of the hour and you go, geez, you know what, that's me, you'd really benefit from sitting down with Jim. Give Jim and his team the call, and they'll be happy to share their insights. Jim has 27 years of experience in this field. He and his team, including Paige, who's coming up in just a second, can be reached at 604-682-5431, 604-682-5431. And we're going to hear from Paige in just a minute. For those of you who don't know a little bit about Jim, a big part of the Doyle practice incorporates a multi-generational approach to money. And to do that well, you do need a team. And maybe you can share a few examples of where not talking to your kids about money and investment issues could present future problems. How many hours do we have? <laughs> True. And when money is involved and you have a number of kids or blended families, money can be a touchy subject, especially when you're talking about the rights, roles, and responsibility of money management. Family dynamics are powerful and often become challenging if there's a family business and any of the kids are active in the business. We help family businesses navigate many of the complex issues that arise, but they don't seem to go away. You're a graduate of the UBC Sauter School of Family Enterprise Advisor Program. What sorts of issues are you helping the family businesses with? Well, we talk about things like governance, uh, through to relationship management, wealth preservation, intergenerational transitions, and next generation leadership. These are issues that go way beyond investment selection, but it's where we want to be. The families we work with expect us to have the resources, the contacts to help solve issues and anticipate their needs that aren't just investment related. And of course, we're happy to do that. That's a recurring theme on this uh, show, Jim. You are looking way beyond just investments. Hey, do you know what uh, makes a great butler? He anticipates your needs. Very good. And I remember on our last show, Carmen Ruiz Ilatha of Joy TV. Did I, I said it pretty well that time. I struggled last time. But uh, she referred to you as her financial concierge, which is a great way of putting it. Some of our greatest successes come from working collaboratively with our other clients' professional advisors. If we can take a load off the client's shoulders by working with their accountant and their lawyer to help manage some of the tax or the legal matters, it brings a little bit easier outcome to those folks that we work with. Now, speaking of being a financial concierge, I know that uh, you run a multi-generational, multicultural practice, and part of what you offer is the ability to serve all of your clients' needs with the help of your team, which is why your associate, Paige Brettel, is joining us here in studio today. Working with family businesses, occasionally we hear from the business owner's kids, oh, your mom or dad's advisor. We want to work with the entire family, but if the kids don't feel they have much in the way of resources, why would they want to engage or work with us, uh, especially with a tenured advisor at this stage in their lives? It's like a chicken and egg situation. If I don't have substantial investments or planning issues at this time, why would I worry about planning in the first place? The challenge we have is when we put estate planning or tax strategies in place or succession planning strategies that will impact the kids, it's quite helpful to have the kids involved in, in a number of ways. It takes time to build the knowledge and understanding, to have them understand how it will impact their lives and for them to understand how their parents' needs and lives are going to be impacted and addressed. Which is why it is key to invest time developing relationships between the parents, their kids, and the advisors. To forge those relationships, it can pay to have someone who's more on their level. As a team, we can bring more to the table as circumstances warrant. This is where Paige and I work together. And Paige, I understand, uh, hello, by the way. Hi. <laughs> I know you're the daughter of an accomplished uh, set of parents, your mom established journalist, having written for newspapers across the country, including the Globe and Mail. Your dad, Canadian diplomat, 
You and your family traveled extensively, memorable postings in Hong Kong, Libya, the Netherlands, Dubai. You hold an honors degree from UNB, and now you're an associate in Jim's practice. And tell us a bit about that journey. Oh, what a journey it's been. I got to <laughs> Vancouver in 2010, and I started to work with Investors Group about a month after I arrived in Vancouver. And I started to work with Jim um, as a marketing coordinator five years ago. I became part of his practice as an associate in February 2016. Um, it's been a bit like learning from the fire hose, <laughs> a little bit. Um, but I've got a great mentor. I'm learning from one of the best in the business. So the experience you have very different experience that you are now managing to infuse into financial planning. Yeah, um, and especially in the practice, Jim and I are definitely blending a cross-section of our, of our different areas of expertise. Um, I'm coming from a bit of a Renaissance background. I've got English, literature, psychology, sociology, women's studies, and business. And I'm looking to blend the sociology, women's studies, and business. Like That's my passion. I always wanted to be able to have a strong voice for women and human rights and be able to offer a valuable contribution in that field. So I really, I really lucked out when I joined Jim's team and I found that our values really strongly align. Well, you come to the table, obviously you've just talked about real global life experience. With a background like yours, why did uh, financial services excite you? Um, well, I saw a gap where I, I really felt like I could make a difference. Um, I think we look at finance, the finance industry, and we look at 86% of advisors are men. You know, we think about money and we think Mr. Moneybags from mm. Monopoly, right? <laughs> yeah. um, finance is a bit of a male-dominated field, and I felt like there was an underserved market. So, you know, money really is integral to the human experience. Um, we all need to have good advice, men, women, and children, and financial security makes all the difference. Money influences and touches all of our lives, so you're right. What, what, what do you value most about your role as a financial advisor? So what I would value most is the ability to empower others and the opportunity to make a real difference in my community, Making, helping people make the best decisions. Um, you ultimately get to live your best life. You know, if you're on the right path to financial security, you can make better choices. You don't feel like you're under the gun, and you have that pressure like the wolf at your door. What motivates you, Paige Brettel? People. People motivate me. Um, when I run into people, and I've got a few friends who hold this perspective, people who don't think that they need to have a plan, and you know, I always kind of have to say to them, if you don't know where you're going, how are you going to get there? If you're going to go out on a journey, you're going on a trip, you're not going to go on a trip and not pack a suitcase, not have an itinerary of some sort, or not have your phone in a GPS. Like, it makes no sense, right? So I would say helping people understand a lot of the limitations that could befall them without a plan. You gave us a really interesting stat just a minute ago about the gender breakdown in this particular industry. Do you have another little you know, factoid that surprised you about this particular industry? Yeah, actually. Um, so 86% of advisors are men, and only 8% of advisors total, men and women, are dual licensed. And what, what that means is that... I can help you with both the investment side of the picture and your insurance side of the picture. And mm. you know what? If you're going to make money, you want to protect that money. You had to have brought that up for a reason, that 8%. Uh, well, it comes down to value, right? We're having this conversation here today, and it's about the value of working with an advisor and advise people build more wealth. So how much value are you getting in your advisor relationship? Are they looking at your whole financial picture? You know, are they simplifying your world or do you have pots of money all over the place that it's really hard to keep track of? What I'm getting uh, when I listen to the two of you and get to know your team a little bit more is it sounds that each and every day your group is trying to build value into this practice, whether it's developing new relationships or finding new ways to provide your services or finding uh, many new innovative ways to get us excited about our financial futures. So what's your biggest takeaway from those particular values? Make sure you're getting the right advice. I want to help people on their financial and their investing journeys because I understand firsthand what can happen when we don't get the right advice and not to mention if we don't follow that advice. All right, here's an on-the-spot uh, question really quickly. What's the best piece of advice you can offer right here, right now? You have to plan to get ahead. And to add to that, I'd say you have to start saving the earlier the better, have consistency, 
And remember, it's never too late to get started. I think I have a story that illustrates this hopefully nicely. Early in my career, I had a gentleman come to see me. He's about 69 years of age, and he's working at a gas station. He wanted to start a savings plan. He had immigrated to Canada and didn't qualify for the CPP or the old age security. And he was rather stoic when he told me, I'm going to have to work for the rest of my living life. If I don't work, there's no paycheck. I'm going to need something to fall back on when my health eventually fails. This story really stuck with me. Well, it should resonate with all of us, frankly. Yeah, me too. I mean, I, I want to help people avoid a fate like that. Before the show, we were sharing a coffee, <laughs> our lattes, and going over the show. And you brought an interesting topic to the table, something you referred to, in fact, as the latte factor page. What is that? Oh, the latte factor. As you were ribbing me as I enjoyed my latte, actually, which it was a, a gift from a friend, okay? <laughs> um, it really, the latte factor comes down to are we factoring our everyday luxuries into our budgets? You know, and, and maybe some of us would not say that our everyday coffee is a luxury, but really when you look at wants and needs, do you want the coffee? Do you need the coffee? That's up for debate and a longer conversation than we have time for here today. <laughs> but what I really want to bring to people's attention is to highlight the fact that your latte, your coffee, is a part of your daily budget. $6.04 was mine, by the way. So obviously, we think we deserve that, don't we? Maybe we do. So where's the danger? I mean, other than the danger of, you know, gaining calories or spilling hot coffee on yourself, why is that so important? I think it comes down to not being engaged with our spending habits. It's mindless, you know. I think money mindfulness is really a tenet that I like to bring forward. It includes your daily spend on coffee. Like all the little purchases add up. I'm going to have to go ahead and agree with you on that one. We've actually tried to cut out the coffee in our household. Good for you. Well, you can always buy a coffee maker. Well, we have a coffee maker. We make great coffee. (laughs) I'm speaking from experience here, but how often do we go to the grocery store with items in mind? We might have even made a list. We're really proud of ourselves because we made the list. We get in there and we walk by, sell items, and we're like, oh, I need that. You know, Q-tips or the key lime pie ice cream. Well, key lime pie ice cream. Oh, I saw your face. Yeah. I remember that from the last show. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's only, you don't need five of them, though, Peter. Well, you know, maybe four. Not I know five you're trying, Costco-sized you're right. tubs. Okay. Those are, it's all the middle grocery store items. You're exactly right that we've all done it, uh, and we don't need five. Well, maybe four, and they freeze well. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, I'm trying to um, offer a little insight here is to the fact that the financial decisions that we make, they can add up. And we think we're being prudent. We think we're, we're pretty smart with our money. But ultimately, impulse spending, it adds up and it hurts the ability to save for the bigger goals. Which leads to the bigger question, Paige and Jim. Why do people feel that they don't need help when it comes to financial planning? I think I'm going to feel this one. I'll take it. Um, in my experience, there's a feeling I think that we're always going to have time. Tomorrow's another day. You know, it's like I'll start working out tomorrow. I'll wake up at 5 a.m. tomorrow. I'll start working on my budget tomorrow. Oh, but, that, you know, what's wrong with that approach? What's wrong with saying tomorrow, Paige? Well, I mean, nothing. If if you're not really worried about consequences down the road, there's nothing wrong with it. It's kind of like, you know, where, where's the line in the sand? If you keep moving it, you're never going to get there. So I think the trouble really comes down to the fact that we don't know what we don't know. We don't know what the future holds. And we don't understand the full ramification of financial decisions we're making today. Oftentimes, decisions made on the fly, like impulse buys. And these behaviors can really impact our future. And and that's really where it comes down to having professional help. It's like having a coach of sorts. As Jim has mentioned many times, money is emotional. And sometimes it pays to share perspectives as to what seems to be working and what is obviously not working. Any final thoughts you'd like to share before uh, wrapping up, Paige? I'd say make time to regularly review your goals. If you haven't made a list of maybe your short-term, medium-term, and long-term financial goals, it's never too late to start. And then you can kind of feel a bit better about what you are paying for. Great conversation from a millennial, by the way. Uh, Cutting out small expenses is a great first step towards getting our finances in order. That is, 
unless we're talking about key lime pie ice cream. Thank you, Paige, <laughs> for giving us uh, a great reminder that uh, this journey that we called life, in order for it to be successful, should always include some planning help. And look who's here to help you with that. Plan more, worry less. If you'd like to get started on your financial journey and you'd like some help, call Paige, talk to Jim, the entire team at 604-682-5431. 604-682-5431. Still a little bit more to go this hour. You're listening to Boomer Life on CL 650. I'm Peter Shad, and today we're joined by Jim Doyle, Senior Financial Consultant with Investors Group. And when we come back, we're going to learn the Greek alphabet of finance, a whole new perspective on the value of advice. Next on Boomer Life. Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life on CL 650.